You're listening to Unlocking Vulnerability, a podcast produced by Helen Pettifer, helping you better understand consumer vulnerability. Hello, I'm Helen Pettifer, and welcome to Unlocking Vulnerability. In this episode, I'll be talking about bereavement, as well as the many challenges facing those who are grieving during lockdown. I've seen on the news today that in the week ending the 10th of April, 18,500 deaths were recorded in the UK. That's an increase of 8,000 on the average at this time of the year. The Office for National Statistics stated a third were linked to coronavirus, but deaths from other causes also increased. These additional deaths could be indirectly linked to lockdown and the situation we're all facing. And I thought I'd explore what some of these causes might be in this episode. First off, obviously, the major killer is coronavirus. Hearing the stories from the NHS, having a loved one die from the coronavirus is absolutely traumatic. Being highly contagious, it means that family members are not always able to be with their loved ones when they die. The opportunity to say goodbye is missed, leaving words and feelings left unsaid. In many cases, the families are still at home, waiting by the phone to hear regular news and updates from the hospital. And the chances are that they're going to be told the devastating news over the telephone, rather than in a face-to-face situation. Must be even more traumatic for the families of victims who were fit and healthy with no underlying health conditions. Their death must have come unexpectedly and a huge shock. It's also worth considering the NHS workers who are losing their lives whilst fighting to save others. It's an incredibly heartbreaking situation that people are facing. Another factor to consider is the increase in domestic abuse cases. Not everyone is safe in their own home. It can be stressful being in lockdown facing other challenging circumstances such as a loss of a job, addictions or even poor mental health. At these highly stressful times, it can be even more dangerous for those who are living with an abusive partner or family member. And domestic abuse can consist of any or a combination of the following. Bullying, threatening and jealous behaviour, controlling behaviour, whether that's over the victim's appearance, time, money, social events, limiting or cutting off access to friends and family, physical abuse and sexual abuse. The National Domestic Abuse Helpline has seen a 25% increase in calls and online requests for help since the lockdown began. Shockingly, figures presented to the Home Affairs Committee highlighted that domestic abuse killings have increased significantly since lockdown started on the 23rd of March. Again, it's heartbreaking for those facing these types of situations. I briefly touched on poor mental health and it can only be expected that many of us will be experiencing changes to our mental health. World public health experts have predicted a global long-term mental health crisis following this pandemic. For many, this period of lockdown and isolation is incredibly lonely and debilitating. It's not just the elderly and those living alone that experience loneliness. In fact, anyone can experience episodes of feeling lonely and isolated, even in a family or a busy household. There may also be many individuals who are seriously struggling to cope and they're considering suicide as their only way out. If you or anyone you know is experiencing suicidal thoughts, please do talk. It's absolutely crucial that you talk to someone. It can be someone you trust, or it could be to the Samaritans. Their number is 116123. That's 116123. Please do find someone you can talk to, or encourage the person that you know to talk to somebody. You don't have to go through this alone. Another cause for the increase in deaths could be down to pre-existing health conditions. Figures show that visits to A&E departments are down since the outbreak in the UK, and this is not necessarily a good thing. Those experiencing changes or complications to their health may be avoiding getting the urgent and necessary support and medical treatment they need. I was really surprised at one of the UK government's daily press conferences last week. 
the health minister insisted that individuals who suspected they were having heart attacks and strokes, he insisted they must call an ambulance. And he insisted this quite fervently. And I was quite surprised because I was thinking, are people failing to ask for the help that they desperately need for their life-threatening conditions? they may feel that actually coronavirus victims are the top priority within the NHS and that's a scary thought. Looking at all of these causes it can be easy to see how the death figures can be much higher than first anticipated and bereavement is one of the major vulnerabilities facing individuals today. Isolation in lockdown can be challenging for many people however it can be far more distressing for those who are facing a bereavement. When you're facing the death of a loved one, sometimes physical contact is what you need the most. A hug. A hug speaks far more than words. Usually after a death, family and friends arrive and they provide emotional and practical support, allowing an opportunity to talk through feelings, memories and funeral plans. Obviously, with lockdown, this is not now possible. It can be really challenging for people who are going through bereavement, going through grief and having to plan a funeral. Isolation can make it more challenging for those grieving to reach out to others for support. Just simply picking up the telephone or texting someone may be really difficult for individuals, especially if they can't find the words to fully express how they're feeling. Also as well, we're living in our own homes 24-7 now and homes carry memories. For individuals facing life without their spouse, partner, family member, spending time in the family home can be really upsetting. They've got memories there and they've got a daily routine and tasks that they once did when that loved one was alive. And those changes can really impact their purpose and make them think that they have no purpose to carry on. And of course, there's the additional changes and restrictions on funerals. With the UK lockdown restrictions, funerals are now limited to a small number of attendees. It can be incredibly distressing for families not to be together at this time when they're saying goodbye to our loved ones. Also as well, it's worth considering that due to the nature of coronavirus, many celebrities and high profile people are dying. Many individuals may have feelings of intense grief and bereavement towards people they've never met, yet felt connected to. And I immediately think back to um, August 1997 when Princess Diana died and the outpouring of grief from so many people with people that had never even really met her and yet they felt connected to her. So that's another thing that's worth considering. Bereavement is such a deep and big topic. I was thinking twice about covering this in one of my episodes and I thought, no, it's something that we need to be talking about because it is so relevant to so many people. The chances are that we're going to come into contact with people who are facing bereavement. Sadly as well, it's going to affect us all at some point in our lives. And it's really important when somebody is going through bereavement, how people and especially organisations treat and support them. It can really make a huge difference to how they cope. So if you are facing bereavement, whether that's through COVID-19 or not, please do take care of yourself and look after yourself. And if you need any support or someone to talk to, please reach out to the people that you trust. Let them know that you need help, that you need support, that you need a listening ear. Cruise Bereavement has a free helpline offering support and advice and again the listening ear and you can contact them on 0808 808 808 1677 and that telephone number again is 0808 808 808 1677 and you can find that on their website cruise.org.uk. Please take care of yourself, stay safe, stay well, stay home. Remember to subscribe to my podcast and leave a review. You can also follow me on Twitter at hpetofatrain and I look forward to you joining me on my next episode.